Welcome back to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center. Our topic today is healthy eating, and my guest is Rachel Head, a registered dietitian from our Diabetes Education Department. Welcome back, Rachel. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that video we watched in that earlier segment, it was entitled The Art of Healthy Eating. So it's not, I guess, just about what you eat, but how you eat it. Definitely, there is an art to it. Uh, believe it or not, we've really gotten away from that, mm -hmm. I believe, in, in the past few decades. Um, but getting more enjoyment out of our food actually slows us down. And if we slow down, we tend to eat less and, and feel more satisfied. And does it affect how we digest our food as well, do you think, slowing down? Uh, I would say so. I mean, yeah. yeah, if we're scarfing down food, not only can we not... You know, not only do we put more food in, mm -hmm. but it does make it more difficult for our body to digest that. Well, I know, I remember hearing, I've heard this many times, that it takes like 20 minutes or something like that for your stomach to get the message to your brain that it's full. Yes. And it's, so if you're still eating after that 20 minutes, that's when you get that, oh my gosh, I can't move feeling Definitely. afterwards, mm -hmm. right? So when we overeat, that's part of what the problem is, right. that we're going too fast. And not only that, but also something that the video brought up was really measuring um, or, or estimating how hungry you are at the beginning mm -hmm. and how satisfied you are or how satisfied you want to be at the end of your meal. And if you can cut it off then, if you can practice that and, and really master that, that's part of the art of healthy eating. And what about when you eat out, when you go out to restaurants? Do you yes. have any tips on that? Definitely. One is do it on special occasions. <laughs> right. um, try to limit uh, when you go out to eat, first of all, okay. because any time that we go out to eat, we're likely to eat about 50% more calories, more fat, more salt, more sugar. Wow. So that's a significant increase yeah. over eating at home. Um, so time it for when, you know, you've got a friend's birthday or, or a co-worker's leaving or something right. like that. Okay. Um, you can also choose your restaurants wisely. You can do a little bit of research beforehand and make sure the restaurant is geared towards healthier eating. Mm -hmm. uh, certain sandwich shops in town are, are doing more of that. Um, you can even look online a lot at the times they'll have nutrition information. So you oh, can go look at look in advance and find what you'll eat and know, you know, stick to it and know the calorie content of that. So that helps a lot. It helps it you pick what you need. I know one of the habits I started getting into when I go out to eat too is when they bring me my food, I ask for a, t a to go box immediately, and I cut mm -hmm. it in half right off the bat. Or if I've got my husband there, a lot of times we'll split, split it. Mm -hmm. a meal, which makes which usually means I don't get nearly as much. <laughs> as <laughs> but if we are eating fifty percent more calories, right. and then we go and we split the meal that yeah. way, yeah, we're getting around that problem. Yeah, and that to go box idea too. I've found that if I put it away right away, it's amazing because mm -hmm. I'm quite satisfied. But if it's sitting in front of me. Usually I'll keep eating right. it. <laughs> and in this economy, you know, s stretching that dollar and getting an sure. extra meal out Makes of sense it. sense, too. Yeah, that so really you're helps. You're, yeah, if you're kind of killing two birds with one <laughs> stone. You're eating fewer calories and saving money. You've got lunch for tomorrow. Sounds great. <laughs> one of the things I know they've started doing in California, it'd be great if they did in Arizona, I've noticed uh, when we go back to visit is the restaurants, most of them now actually have the calories right on their menus, mm -hmm. which is really nice because then... Well, I don't know, maybe it's not so nice sometimes, but <laughs> you can see right away yeah, what being, you're eating. Being more informed does make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's why I recommend if you are going to go out to eat, look online yeah. uh, ahead of time. But, you know, if we don't, if we go and we sit down at a restaurant in town um, and we eat this dish which tastes good, and we're not even thinking about nutrition information when we're eating it. Right. Um, there's a certain dish at a certain restaurant I'll leave unnamed, <laughs> but you know, uh, just going there and eating that one dish, that's uh, half a day's worth of calories wow. in one meal. It's two days worth of fat, it's three days worth of salt. Oh. Um, and so you know, you get this, you know, Right. Yeah. Large so dose of, of unhealthy stuff. Mm -hmm. It really is important to be aware of, of what we're putting into our mouths because right. it Im impacts us in so many ways. And like we talked about slowing down and, and chewing, I think, you know, takes just enjoying the food more makes a big difference. They talked about that savoring the texture of the food and the taste. And I mean, if you're going to spend the money, we should at least enjoy it, right? I agree. <laughs> okay. So we talked briefly earlier also about the Diabetes Health Expo that will yes. be coming up in November. Is there any other information you want to share about that? 
Um, well, I think what's most intriguing about diabetes is mm -hmm. that a lot of people are walking around with diabetes completely unaware to the fact that they have any problems with blood sugar control. Uh -huh. um, and also, we're not really aware of how serious that issue is, uh, what damage it's causing. So um, maybe we can talk a little bit oh, about great. Um, yeah. symptoms to look for, uh, and then you can also plan on attending the Diabetes Expo to get more information. Because that's free, it's right. open to the public, mm -hmm. anyone can come. Do we have a date yet for that? Do you know? I, I'll have to look that okay, up. I think it's mm -hmm. like the first weekend in November and it usually goes like 10 to 2 and it's right here at the Wellness Center. It is. Mm -hmm. So that works out well too and again it's open to, to the public. So what kind of symptoms should someone be watching for? Usually the biggest symptom of any kind of uh, nutritional abnormality mm -hmm. is energy levels. So oh. if your energy levels are extremely low, which I know a lot of people have trouble with that, right. um, the first thing we can look at is food and activity. If we make a couple of minor changes, our energy levels can go back to normal. Hmm. And it's no different with blood sugar levels because sugar is energy in our bodies. Right. And so if our energy levels are just out of whack, that can be an indication that something's wrong with that, that oh. control. So a lot of times just changing our heat eating habits and our diet is can help and not have to take medication. That's the goal. Uh, right. We want to yeah. prevent going on any medication if at all possible. Sure. So, mm -hmm. so do you focus, you're, I know you're with the diabetes education program, so is that kind of your primary focus? Yes, it diabetes? is. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you do, do other nutrition counseling as well. I do. Okay, and your office is right here in the Wellness Center, so that's good and convenient. And you know my office is in there too, so I get uh, uh, promoted or pushed to work out more too. So I do too. <laughs> I feel motivated. It's right there. I don't right. really have an excuse. Yeah. Yeah, and I think obviously we know that combining good healthy eating with an, a good ed exercise program those two elements are key to the weight loss or keeping that weight off. I and agree. Down. It's really hard to be healthy just mm -hmm. doing one or the other. Um, I tell people this all the time, you know, you can go and do your 30 minutes every day on the cardio machine. Mm -hmm. If you go home and you eat ice cream and pizza, <laughs> are you going to be healthy? No, not particularly. And then at the same time, you know, you can eat like a rabbit, but if you're not going and building that muscle, mm -hmm. um, are you really going to have uh, good muscle tone, right. muscle strength? No. So. Right. I know my mom, bless her heart, she belonged to a hiking club. Mm -hmm. And she'd go out every weekend, religiously go for these long hikes. And they always ended up either at Dairy Queen or Baskin <laughs> Robbins. And she could never figure out why she wasn't losing weight. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> it's the end of the story that's getting to you. <laughs> So it is. It's a combination of the two. She could uh, have seen a dietitian too. Yes, she should have. have. Yes, she <laughs> should have. have. <laughs> um, now, you mentioned the, the referral, but again, someone could just call you if they have questions. And yes. for just regular nutrition counseling, they can just make an appointment on their own right. too, you right? You don't necessarily have to go through insurance or have to go through your doctor if okay. you just want to meet one-on-one. -on -one. We also have a basic nutrition class. So if you've got a couple of generic questions about eating healthier, about uh, eating out healthy and mm -hmm. grocery shopping a little bit healthier, meal planning, things like that, that class might be able to answer your questions, very low cost. Okay, and again, that number, that was 692-4600? Yes, that that's the call? front desk of the Wellness Center, okay. or they can just stop in um, and come and talk yes. to us. Well, and another thing I was just thinking about with that cooking class that Emily and I took was the fact that you also gave us information about eating out and mm -hmm. kind of making better choices. And we had some sheets that showed um, like the worst foods and the best foods type of thing. And again, we'll stay keep <laughs> nameless on that. But, <laughs> but you had good information on there that mm -hmm. helped you make better choices as well. So that's always good. I do like to provide some eye-opening handouts. <laughs> and, and also, um, you guys received a handout that just kind of laid out uh, from least to most in terms of fat content so that you can make your own choices, mm -hmm. not saying that you can't ever have a steak right. again, but if you're going to choose a steak, you know, what are some healthier options right. for you? Well, and I know that that menu that night, I think it was, was vegetarian, mm -hmm. but like I said, the black bean burger was really good. There are lots of good options that I think even folks that don't consider themselves vegetarians would enjoy that mm -hmm. whole menu. It was really good. Well, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we're looking forward to the next one. And hopefully you get a date set and some folks can call you and learn more about it and have another class coming up soon. Right. We'll be putting flyers and marketing materials out soon for that good. one. Good. 
Now, is there anything else you can think of that folks should know about when it comes to diabetes? And um, I mean, we know, obviously, in our society, of obesity is a, a major issue, and that plays into so many things. It affects our health in so many ways mm -hmm. with diabetes, as well as heart, and even my knees got better after I lost some of that weight. So, sure. when it when it comes to diabetes. Um, controlling diabetes as well as preventing diabetes, mm -hmm. the main word that we like to use is balance. Um, you know, especially when we talk about carbohydrates, we hear a lot of talk about limiting carbohydrates, and I think it's coming across as eliminate carbohydrates, oh. and that's just as bad of a problem as excess carbohydrates. Sure. So um, coming in and talking to a dietitian um, and talking about how to balance it so that you get enough carbohydrates for the energy that you need not enough to really damage your diet, you know, your blood sugar control. Pretty much, That's you know, important. it's funny, if, if I guess I would say what I've learned in my all my years of wisdom <laughs> is when you see these fad diets that are just focusing on one thing, like it's all protein or all carbs kind of thing, mm -hmm. or eliminating all those things, that obviously our foods have those different things in them for a reason. Our bodies they're, need they're them. They're naturally, yes. Right, mm -hmm. so it's just kind of, like you said, finding a balance finding the right amount that your body needs to keep the energy level up and that will help it metabolize it, right. keep going, okay? And the best way I like to think about uh -huh. it is not in terms of nutrients, carbs versus protein versus fat, but in terms of recipes. I like talking about putting it into practice in the kitchen and making a tasty meal out of it. Well, that's great information, Rachel. I really appreciate you being on the show today. And Thank you for having me. And again, me. if someone has any questions, they can call you at 692-4600. That's correct. All right. Very good. Thank you. Well, thanks again, and we appreciate you joining us today. I hope you learned some things and that you'll stick around for next week's show. We're going to be having information about we have. If you've got a we in your cupboard, you might be able to use this class as well. So we'll hope to see you next week. Thank you.